What's up, everybody? Today is October 7th. We are one day out, really. Uh, not exactly 24 hours from when I'll be on stage, but one day out from Mr. America. Um, got up at my usual time this morning around 6.15. Started, had my first car meal, which I'm about to hop in and have another one. Uh, took my son to school. Um, went to Retro Fitness in Manahawken really quick. Got in a quick little circuit, nothing major, around 50, 50 to 60% intensity, like three rounds of a couple exercises, um, just to get the blood flowing, water moving through my body, prime them to take in the amount of carbohydrates that I'm going to have to try to get down today. Um, we're going for 680, so we're going big, uh, due to the fact that I am on probably around 3, 30, 4 o'clock tomorrow. Um, and I just experimenting with the protocols with my coach, Brandon, I flatten out uh, overnight and it takes me a while to kind of fill back in. So even if we spilled a little bit today, it won't matter tomorrow. In fact, it'll probably benefit me. Um, already packed all my food, packed my bags. I'm pretty much set to go. Uh, I'm going to end up leaving the house probably around 2.30 or so, get down to Atlantic City, check in, relax for a little bit. Uh, make sure that I get my, my competitor numbers, may catch up with a couple people that I have tanning at 5.30, um, and then I'm going to continue throughout my day. Um, I'm going to try to do a couple different vlogs today, maybe. It depends on how I feel. Um, this season has been incredible, um, and I'm having, a lot of, I'm, I'm having a lot of emotions right now. Um, to be able to come back from this bicep tear with all the nerves, the fear, the doubts, uh, has meant a lot to me. Um, you know, I, I didn't know if I still had it in me, but I, obviously I do. I still have more in the tank, uh, at least for this last competition. Um, you know, to come in first place in my class at the OCB presidential to come in second overall to Levi, who ended up being the OCB cup Yorton winner this year to, doing the, though I don't, I didn't make it to Yorton, unfortunately, just things didn't work out to going to the ANBF show and competing against Marshall and Joe LaSara and taking first in that competition, um, was an honor and a privilege to compete against those gentlemen and win that show. Um, to now two weeks later to do the Mr. America, which is going to be probably as of right now, one of the largest, if not the largest, natural bodybuilding event ever with everything they've got going on um, between Amazon Fire TV, Roku TV, ESPN, one of the ESPN channels being there, to Natty News Daily, who's going to live stream it, to other networks, to other vendors and people who are going to be there to cover it. It's probably one of the most incredible opportunities to be part of, regardless of how this show turns out. Just because I am so proud to be a natural bodybuilder, um, and I know a lot of you don't want to believe me, but that's fine, um, to get this sport exposure, to show people, especially young men who are 15, 16, 17, in their 20s, in their 30s, in their 40s, um, that you do not need to resort to performance-enhancing drugs you can build a quality physique if you're willing to put in the work and take the time and be a student of the game. Um, that that opportunity is there, and I'm hoping that with this, we're going to see more attention, coverage, and sponsorships for the natural bodybuilding world. I don't care whether that's for me or somebody else. I just, just the opportunity being there is awesome. Um, and I'm hoping we're going to see a lot more opportunities for natural bodybuilding athletes, male and female alike, um, that we get the honor and the respect that we deserve. Um, I just, I, I'm a pretty articulate guy, but I have a really hard time sometimes conveying the importance of this. Um, it's incredible. Um, yeah, I, I'm doing my best and, and listen, I'm not putting any stress on myself to win this show. I am going against cream of the crop pro natural bodybuilders. If I can just hold my own up there one way or another, regardless of placement, I will be happy. Would I love to win Mr. America? Absolutely. Um, 
more than anything, if I could place top five, I think I might just fall over and collapse right then and there, to be honest. Um, but I'm going to give it everything I've got. The work has been done. I'm confident in the package that I'm going to be bringing. I'm confident in the plan that my coach and I have set forth with the carb loads. Uh, I'm really excited to be bringing two competitors to stage, one in classic pro physique, Joey Schoner, one in amateur physique uh, in Thai. They, they've both busted their ass and done everything I've asked them to do to get ready. The, the packages they're bringing are their best as of right now, and I, I look forward to working with them in the future and making them even better. Um, you know, unfortunately, my son will not be able to t attend this event, but he's excited for me. All he's been talking about is, <laughs> again, I'm sorry. Um, I hope you win, Dad. It's cute and important to me uh, that I do my best for him. Because though natural bodybuilding is not a big sport and most people don't give a damn about it, um, the fact that I could be a role model for him to work hard, period, end of statement, whatever, whatever he chooses to do, I don't give a damn if he ever competes in bodybuilding. I just want him to see his dad give his best and it inspires him to give his best um, at whatever he's passionate about. Uh, it means a lot to me and I truly hope that my work ethic and my mentality um, inspires him to be his best, whatever that is, whatever he determines that to be. Um, it means a lot. And I wish he could be there, but it, it just, it's too long of a day. He's only six, but uh, I'm going to zoom him later, send him some pictures, keep him in the loop because he gets a huge kick out of, you know, me posing and seeing my progress pictures and he just loves all of it. So I'm just going to keep him up to speed and, uh, you know, uh, keep him a part of the day, even though he's not necessarily there because he's got a soccer game tomorrow. He's got to go to, he's got to be there. I can't have him skipping games all the time for this. You know, he committed to a team. He's got to be part of the team. Um, so uh, I've been getting a lot of messages so far today, uh, from a bunch of people wishing me luck, believing that I'm going to win the show. Um, ask other competitors who are doing Mr. America who are amateurs asking me for advice doing my best not to spend all of my energy on them, but at the same time, I appreciate where they're coming from. Um, trying to take the compliments, trying to take the positive energy, and also trying to be there for others at the same time. Um, as an advocate for the sport, it's important that I act like a professional, which means when amateurs are mess messaging me and asking me questions and, and looking for some support that I give it to them, they need it, they've earned it, they deserve it. Um, they're the ones who are also going to keep this sport continuing and, and alive. And also for other pros, man, I, you know, listen, my goal is to go in there and beat everybody. I'm not saying that's going to happen, but that's the mentality, right? Um, but at the same time, I want to be humbled by this experience. I want to appreciate um, every minute of this experience. I want everybody to be on stage giving their best Um I want to applaud every person that has come and will be coming. Thank you for being a part of this. Thank you for bringing your best. Thank you for making me step up my game. Thank you for holding me accountable. And I'm hoping I'm doing the same for you. Um, so here goes nothing. Uh, next one, I'll probably be down in Atlantic City. I'm going to try to take a bunch of pictures and stuff. And then uh, I will release all of this soon. I uh, hope you guys are going to be enjoying the whole series I filmed before this and uh, everything that's going to come after this. All right, guys. Bye. So what's going on, everybody? Um, I'm actually on my fourth meal right now, which is basically just Cinnamon Toast Crunch, about four cups worth. Um, at the hotel, at the Tropicana, and uh, parking here is a little weird, but figured it all out. Did the self check in, hanging out in the Havana Towers right now. Both of my clients are here, and they're about to get their tan in about an hour. I'm going to get my tan, and just um, shoving carbs in my face. Send some progress pictures to my coach. Um, he thinks everything's looking good, and we're just going to check in a couple more times throughout the day to see 
what we want to do here. Um, with these last three meals, I'm using core load. I want to show as much of this carbohydrate to the muscle as possible. Got water. Then you need about 5,000 milligrams of salt. And when this is all said and done, that's about it. So, hope you're enjoying this. Next time I hop on, I'll be a lot darker. <laughs> So last video I had, you love the tan, right? You got raccoon eyes right there. <laughs> uh, it's been an interesting couple hours. I'm not going to go into all of it, but nonetheless, we're here. We're in one piece. Uh, last video you saw is on my fourth meal. Got to my sixth meal. I got all the carbs in. All 680 of them. Um, don't feel too bad, actually, considering. It's always going to be rough, but I made it through. Watching some TV right now, boom, dropping some of these vlogs onto my computer so I can process them and get them off my phone. And tomorrow I got to get up, be tanned at 7.30 with my second coat. Uh, show starts at 9 and uh, I got my competitor, Ty, who's the second class. Uh, so after 10 o'clock, be dealing with him, but do the long break between amateurs and pros i'm probably gonna head back to my hotel room in between and come back after the intermission since i am not on till the last class anyway guys i'm tired i'm just trying to relax unwind and that's it tomorrow's gonna be another day let's go back, back, keep, back. It keep it tight keep it tight Move it out. Move it out. you got it come on greg come on greg let's go Grab most muscular. Will you, Greg? Go! Come on, Greg! Come on, Greg! Leave it all up there, buddy. Yeah, it's right, Greg! Nice! Let's go, Greg! Come on, Greg! Be last. Good job, Greg! Good job, Greg! You got a front double biceps.
interviewing. We have everyone line up on the front. So what is up, everybody? I tried to vlog. I think I finished somewhere on Friday night after my tan. Um, it was a hectic day. Just trying to check in, get my competitor number, get tanned. Uh, I had two clients in the show, Joey Shoner and Ty, and we're trying to carve them up a little bit the night before and kind of get things figured out for the plan for the next day. Um, then I had to get up early the next morning, get my first carb meal in. I tanned at about 7.30 in the morning, got that done, um, which was weird. Like, they actually asked me to rinse the previous night's tan and get, you know, recoded, and it actually came out pretty good. I almost didn't follow those instructions just because I've never seen that happen before. I've never been asked to do that before. Um, but overall, I guess it was the right move based on uh, whatever coding and method that they were using. So did that, uh, came back to the room, um, then went back again for the competitor meeting at nine o'clock. Uh, Mark Tariel just was telling us about all the plans for the show and some of the surprises and thanking us all for um, you know, choosing to compete there. And, you know, just to get overall in the Mr. America, we had pros from, God, over 40 states and some international competitors. So it was a huge show. Uh, amateurs were in the morning, pros were after one o'clock. So there's a lot of people. It was huge. It was awesome. It was like really competition from all over the di different places. Some amateurs were more experienced than others pros from all different organizations. It was just absolutely phenomenal. Stage was huge. The Tropicana was great. Um, I know there's a, you know, a bunch of stuff that's going to be distributed later via um, uh, Roku and Amazon Fire and uh, the live stream that Natty News Daily did. I'm waiting to, to take a view of that. I heard they did a really good job. There was a lot of good chatter about that on social media afterwards. Um, but anyway, I want to thank Mark for putting that all together. The Mr. America was incredible. Loved it. The expediters were great. Uh, got to meet a lot of cool people backstage while just hanging out. We're all now following each other on social media. Everybody was so humble and just like, you know, shooting the shit and talking shop. And it was just overall it was a great experience. Um, can't say enough great things about the Mr. America and that show. And I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing it grow even, even larger uh, over the next couple of years. Um, so anyway, did the competitor meeting with Mark. Uh, we got to see Tom Platts there. He was a guest judge and speaker. Uh, Carla, I hope I don't do this wrong. Carla Upton, who was like the first Miss America, was also there. She's in incredible shape still. Um, natural, um, but just well-built, well-put-together, well-spoken. Um, everybody just thanking us for carrying that, you know, that natural bodybuilder banner and, um, and, and running with it so that everybody can see what you can do without drugs. So that was cool for a bit. Um, the show started pretty much on time shortly after 10 o'clock. I think they did a really good job of turning everything around. I had my competitor Ty start as the second class as an amateur physique. Listen, man, Ty worked his butt off, um, handled a lot of his own training. I was just working on the macros and the cardio stuff, but he built his physique up a lot over the, the past like two years, um, worked really hard to get in better shape for this show, which I think he did. Um, he just, I mean, his class was just stacked. So maybe it wasn't, you know, the result that we hoped for, but did an incredible job. He's already working on his off season and reverse dieting properly to maximize his gains. Um, and I think the fire is officially lit for Ty to come back bigger, better than ever before. And I'm, I'm Glad to work with him and, and just see how his journey goes. Um, after that, I, I didn't watch any more of the amateurs, and I, I don't mean that in a disrespectful way. Um, I was tired. I was nervous. Um, so I went back to the hotel room at about 11 o'clock, chilled out in the hotel room. I was watching uh, Ninja Turtle Seeker of the Ooze just to relax, get off my legs, um, you know, and just mellow out for a little bit. Um, went back to the show around 1230, which they, they finished the amateurs on time. About one o'clock, the pro show started. Um, and then in between each, uh, comparison round for the pros, they were doing like the amateur awards. So backstage, Jenna and a lot of the expediters 
He did a phenomenal job of getting everybody prepped, ready, organized, so that we knew when we were going, how much time we had, uh, and nobody got missed, and there was no delays in the show. So awesome job by everybody there. Um, so I think we ended up getting, there was two open, they took pro bodybuilding, they split into two classes. They had the open class A, which was like the short class, and then they had the open class B, which was the tall class, which is the one I was in. Open class A, stacked as hell. You had Meshach in there, Levi Burge in there, um, Ken Beerley was there, rocking for the ANBF, uh, Brett Freeman was in there. There's a, just a total, I mean, solid class of pros just there. It was already stacked on the, on the first half. Um, so I was sitting backstage trying to get a pump up and fanboying at the same time, watching all those guys go at it. So my hat's off to all of you. You did an incredible job. Um, then I got to go second with the tall class. I was there with the defending Mr. America, Corey Brown, uh, another competitor by the name of Prince, Jola, Sarah, uh, Carl Wittig. Um, the blind, there was another guy in there too called the blind bodybuilder who was awesome to talk to and hang out with. Um, who else was in that class? Joe Farisi and Matt Otero. I'm trying to remember everybody's name off the top of my head. So if I missed anyone, I apologize. Um, they immediately lined us up. We went through the first quarter turns or so. Uh, they separated it immediately, I guess, according to what they thought were the top five and then the bottom four. There was nine total in the class. Uh, I was fortunate enough to make the top five um, off the bat. As we went through some turns, I think I lost myself a little bit, and this was my fault. And again, I'm not saying it would have changed my placing at all. The, com the competition was utterly stacked. Um, but I feel like I lost myself a little bit up there. I don't know if it was nerves. I don't know if I was in awe of the moment. Uh, maybe a little bit of both. But um, they took me off the, the top five or the first call outs and put me in the back for a second. Um, they brought me back out with the second half, took me back out of the second half, and then put me back into the first uh, call outs again. And we went through some more. I think we were on stage for about 20 minutes. Um, I felt good, felt like I finally had caught my stride with all my poses, felt like I held my own. Um, you know, I wish maybe I hadn't lost myself on those first couple turns. Um, again, not saying it would have changed the outcome at all. So looked, I've already looked at um, pictures, I've looked at some live video. One of my friends has, uh, my friend Sharon has, and client Sharon, um, has an iPhone and she recorded like a lot of my class so I could see what I was doing because I always love to have playback. Um, the one goal I had going into this show was just to see how I stacked up. Like, do I really belong? Do I fit in here? Um, am I on that level? Am I, or at least am I close? After seeing all the pictures against those guys, I'm on the level. Uh, I'm not saying I'm elite, but I held my own. I didn't look like a child next to them. Um, my conditioning was there. My fullness was was kind of there and I'll get to that in a second. Um, but I literally at one point was standing next to Corey Brown and he did not make me look like an amateur or a rookie or somebody who didn't belong there. I held my own. So I'm, I'm very proud of that. Um, but I feel like after looking at the videos and again, I loaded 680 grams of carbs on Friday, but I think the amount of time and everything going on backstage, there's two issues I was having. Um, one, I kept drinking water throughout the day. I never dehydrate myself. And I just feel like I feel like I had cotton mouth all day. Um, like I just couldn't get enough. I feel like I just couldn't get enough water in. Um, and then after looking at the pictures, especially of my back, which is usually very detailed and grainy, um, just look flat. Some of the details that I usually see just weren't there for whatever reason. I don't know if I had a spill. I don't think that was the case. I think I just went a little flat from, you know, the amount of time from the morning until four o'clock in the afternoon. Though I was doing small carb meals in between, I think maybe we needed to do a little bit more. But again, hard to say. Um, and again, don't know would have changed anything at all in terms of my placing. But just that's my critique right there. Um, after getting off stage, I got a lot of compliments from you know competitors backstage, coaches backstage. Uh, my coach, Brandon, was actually watching the live stream and was texting me shortly after. And everybody seemed to have the same opinion. I was anywhere from third to fifth. That's how tight it was, I think, between me, Otero, and Farisi. Um, and again, like, 
it, it's a matter of the judges and what you do right and what you do wrong and what they like and what they don't like. So was trying not to get my, my hopes up too high, but was really hoping because even though you make top five, they only take the top three to overall. I was really hoping to make overall. Came back out, found out I made the top five. However, I placed fifth. Um, little disappointed, yes. Am I angry about the placing? No. Um, again, could have justified. First of all, I don't, I'm just glad I made top five because the guys that were in bottom four uh, are great bodybuilders. So I don't know what the judges saw in me over them. Uh, but nonetheless, I was picked in the top five. Okay, I, I can't go into the the judging or what they liked or what they didn't like or how that was or was not fair or anything like that. They saw something in me. I happened to make the top five. I am honored. I am so appreciative of the moment. Um, it was an incredible experience to be up there with those guys, to share the stage with those guys, and after seeing the pictures, knowing that I could definitely hold my own, um, that means the world to me. Because uh, as I put on my Facebook in a post, um, you know, this was supposed to be both my comeback season and my retirement season, um, which most people did not know. Uh, just because the 2018 prep took a lot out of me, had the health issues that I had um, between the health scare and the torn bicep. Um, this does put a lot of wear and tear on my body. Um, I have to make sure that even though I want to be competitive and great, that I, I do have health after this. Um, so after all of that, um, like I said, I was, I was fortunate enough to take fifth. Matt uh, rounded out with um, Corey Brown, Prince, and Matt Otero taking the top three. Um, was a phenomenal overall with Meshack, Levi, uh, there's one other guy for I forget what his name was, but it was a six total, one hell of a showdown. Uh, I think M Meshack ended up winning it all. Prince I think took second. I think Corey took third. Um, just an honor to share the day and the stage with those gentlemen. Um, I was honored that Corey Brown reached out to me after and told me what a good job I did. Um, that I belong there. That I'm one hell of a competitor. Mark Toriello reached out to me and told me what a fierce competitor I was, and thanks for coming to his show. Um, to people in the audience who supported me, to Kent Beerley, to everybody who's who sent me a nice message, greatly appreciate it. Uh, it means the world to me uh, that I lived up to my hopes and my dreams and my aspirations, even though I fell short of the overall. I'm still very satisfied with the package that I brought and the final placement. Um, it's hard for me to like put into words. If you read my Facebook posts I posted, you'll get a better idea, but um, it really did mean the world to be on that stage, to represent myself as a top natural pro. Um, do I still consider myself to be elite by any means? No, but I think I'm on the precipice here. Um, so the question is, after I said this was gonna be my retirement season, is it actually my retirement season? That answer is no. However, that doesn't mean I'm coming back either. Uh, you know, I already, this week, I'm just taking off from training. As many of you know, I've been dealing with a major shoulder issue. Um, I'm gonna start, you know, an off season plan with my Cairo massage therapist to start working on that. Um, get that alleviated, hopefully, as I start to, you know, gain a little bit more weight, it, it won't bother me as much. My hips were bothering me severely for about 24 to 48 hours. Those have loosened up because I'm continuing to move and walk and make sure that I'm taking care of myself. But I took the whole week off from the gym. Um, my carbohydrates right now are right where we left off as we we're starting to increase food going into Mr. America at 330 grams. My body weight has stabilized. I'm sitting at like 178, that's one pound over show weight. Um, my body's handling the food well. So just let my body rest and recover. Saturday, I'm gonna resume training to do legs. Um, and I'm just going to start, you know, getting myself back into the gym, getting blood into the muscle. Uh, I already have some plans on things that I want to work on in the off season. I mean, I want to add size everywhere. Don't get me wrong, but specific focus will continue to be my legs, um, both on the quads and the hamstrings. They need to be bigger. 
Um, and then my back, which I thought was an asset, like I said, fell a little flat and it's happened more than once this season where I don't think my lower back detail is where it needs to be. But based on feedback and what I'm seeing, I need to add some more density into my back. So we're going to work on that as well. Um, and I'm just going to take this off season as get back to enjoying training. I have no specific shows in mind, comeback timeline in mind. I don't even know if I'm coming back. I just want to see how my body responds and kind of go from there. I don't want to add any stress. I don't want to put any ideas in my head, but I kind of have a plan of where at least I want to want to go and train. Um, in the meantime, thank you for everybody who followed. Thank you for support. Thank you for the likes. Thank you for, you know, following me on this journey. Um, I didn't know if I had it in me, to be honest. But I proved to myself I did. I took another step forward in my own personal journey. Um, I know some of you don't get understand like the whole bodybuilding thing. And, and honestly, you don't care. That's fine. Like I get it. Like what I do is not for everybody and nor should it be. But being able to physically and mentally push myself to these limits and test myself and come up successful doing it helps me unlock like <laughs> the next level. Um, to say, okay, we did this, it's possible. How, what else can we do now? And that's not just in bodybuilding and, and fitness that's like in life. So if I can succeed here and push myself here in some of the most difficult scenarios possible, um, it makes handling life much easier in certain scenarios as well. All right, buddy. I, again, um, Damn, man, this all went fast. It went so fast. I felt like I just started the prep in January. And just like that, it's all over. That's how this tends to go. But I was telling my wife and she asked me, did you enjoy it? And going to the first show, I wasn't really enjoying it. I was, I was putting way too much pressure on myself. But this has got to be my favorite season so far. Um... You know, to see that I stood against like top notch guys and held my own. The fact that the one memory and the best memory I'm probably ever going to have competing is my son coming on stage with me and posing. Um, just that's th those type of memories you just can't, you know, it's just too good. It's too great not to have appreciated what I just did. To step in front of a large audience that's going to be published all over TV and hold my own. Man, just love it. Love it. It was great. Um, I can nitpick things, but, you know, there's, that's just how I am. But, man, what a good time. All right, buddy.